Sassy pants. Sassy pants and hands. Oh. <laughs> we got a reunion episode tonight. Aren't you guys in for a treat? Can we get some hearts on that? Everybody's been messaging me and Shane for like, I don't know, how, when was it when we did the last episode? It's got to be almost two months. Yeah, it's been a while. Being like, are you and Shane ever going to come back? And uh, I'll try to, if I haven't gotten back to you, here, here's the reason why I haven't been on live. Uh, my business is slow during the summer. Uh, I don't, like, I make all my money in the winter and tax time, so when the show was on, it was actually my dead time of year where I was kind of slow, but for Christmas, obviously, and the holidays, that's when I sell a lot of my guns, so I've been very busy with work. Um, and obviously, you know, I wanted to take a break because, like, I knew that I, that, uh, the other show was coming up, but, uh, I knew I was going to have a couple months break, but I don't know if you guys have caught... Pillow Talk, um, they premiered an episode last week, I think on the 23rd, that I was on. Uh, for those of you that have been like, oh, you should do Pillow Talk. Uh, I, thought, I thought that was funny because a lot of people were messaging me that, and I knew I was going to be on it, but I couldn't say anything. So, um, <laughs> that's funny, Mula. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I obviously, yeah, I mean, uh, the, last, the last video I posted, I was angry with uh, Dean, but um, we're just, we're hanging out on Saturday, so we figured we would jump on real quick and say, hey, actually, Shane's been busy too, so I haven't really hung out with him as much as, 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 as we were uh, during the show. Thank you very much, Yoi Yeiser. Uh, it's a very different type of show. I actually enjoyed it. Uh, it's a lot different than filming before. It's a lot more simple. There's a lot that goes into before, but uh, no, I, I had a good time, and I don't know, I don't know how many episodes I'm going to be on. To be honest with you, the way they film it, you don't, you don't really know. They they constantly change the cast and stuff, so I, I have no idea. I think I'll be on at least one more, but it, it could be more. I, I really don't know. So can I get a shout out, La Bella Viagera? Here's your shout out from Shame and Tim. Uh, so. Cannot talk about Jennifer. Cannot answer any questions about Jennifer. Guys, if I'm still on TV, that means I'm still under contract, which means that I cannot talk about anything to do with the TV shows. So please, uh, you know, respect and understand. I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, this is not my friend. This is my brother Shane, my older brother <laughs> Shane. We go through that every video. Um... Pillow Talk was filmed in Veronica's house. That is my old house, actually, when we were together that we lived in. But that is her house now. So, uh, Tom, I don't know. Uh, last I heard, Tom was living in New York. I think he moved to New York. Um, but I actually haven't talked to him in a week or two. I did talk to Rebecca yesterday. Uh, she's doing good. Rebecca's a, a nice girl. So, uh, otherwise, from the show... Uh, really, I, I mean, I talked to Darcy around Christmas and just said Merry Christmas or whatever, but not everybody, everybody's been um, busy, you know. After that show, everybody's exhausted. I mean, you go through, like, this emotional, you know, whirlwind from all the shit online and, and, and everything. It's, it's exhausting being on TV and all the messages. And now, like, literally, it's funny because the first couple weeks the show premiered, I would, you know, I'd be in the airport a lot, like, going to New York or whatever, and for the first, like, two weeks maybe even three weeks, nobody recognized me in public. And I, I remember my, my other brother, and I shame my other brother, he texted me one day and he had seen on Twitter that somebody was like, oh my God, I'm sitting next to Tim Malcolm from 90 Fiance at the Charlotte airport, but they didn't say nothing to me. So I was like, damn, I can't believe like nobody's right. Now the show is off and I get recognized more now. Like I cannot leave my house anymore without somebody stopping me and, like, I just had a beard. I, I cut it yesterday, but I've been wearing, like, a big, thick beard. And I wear glasses sometimes because, like, the, my contacts have been bothering my eyes. And I always ask people, like, how did you recognize me? Like, I look nothing like I looked on the show. And they always say the same answer. Oh, I heard you speak. And they recognize me from my voice, which is weird to me because I never really thought that my voice was that unusual. But they spot me every time as soon as I open my mouth. So it's been interesting. I, I still have gotten... A lot of people, you know, to talk about the show or whatever, but, you know, like everything else, everything comes to an end. 
Uh, so now I've moved on and, you know, doing a couple episodes of Pillow Talk, and then, you know, I have no idea what's coming after that. So uh, could be the end of TV, could not be, I don't know. So we'll see. Uh, nice to see you on here joining us. Fans of Live Veronica. Oh, it's Veronica in the chat. Mm -hmm. Hello, Veronica. Uh, Tim, love you to the best. Thank you, cute white girl 77. Those eyes are hard to miss. Yeah, but <laughs> thank you. Uh, I always say I, I thank God for blue eyes, but I'm always wearing sunglasses and they still recognize me. So, you know, and some days I don't mind it. But, you know, to be honest with you, like, I, I, I'm not a everyday people person. Like, some days, like, right now I don't mind getting on Instagram and, like, talking to everybody. But there's some days that I'm, what is it, introvert or extrovert where you don't want to talk to anybody? I always get those two confused. But Introvert. And I, sometimes I'm an introvert, so when I'm at the store in my pajamas just trying to, like, grab a soda, you know, the last thing I want to do is talk about the show. Uh, so sometimes, like, I, like sometimes I'll hear, like, uh, Jennifer, Tim, like, a couple talking, and I'll just start walking really fast to try to... <laughs> Actually, we were at Thanksgiving dinner, and uh, that happened in the restaurant. Like, me and Shane, my family, was there, and we were leaving, and I was walking, and I, I heard somebody say Columbia and Jennifer... Out, out of my ear, and I took the lead up front, and then like two seconds later, Shane came outside with a guy and a girl, and was like, "Oh, they they recognize that one of me." So I try, but if if somebody does spot me, even if I don't feel like talking, I'll always be nice, just because I don't want to be a dick. You know, somebody's trying to support you and is excited to talk to you. You know, it's the least you can do is put on a smile and and I, yeah, I do have some social anxiety for sure. I don't think that's a secret. Uh, but you know, yeah, it's, it's fun. There's a meme that I love that, uh, was floating around Facebook like a month or two ago that says, uh, the gas station nearest to your house has seen you look the worst. And it's totally true because I have a store right down the street from my house. And like these people probably wonder like, what is this guy on? Like I literally roll up in there. Like I haven't showered in two days and you know, it's like, I, I've been working seven days a week. So it's been rough, but anyway, can't talk about money on the show. That would get me in trouble. Uh, my brother's not quiet. I, I was talking a lot because I wanted to catch you guys up on where I've been and what's going on. So, you know, he is just uh, chilling. But if you have any questions for Shane, obviously, feel free to ask. Uh, <laughs> yep, I'm in my pajamas right now. Like, this, this is my hangout in the house attire. So, nah, you guys are always so mean. Uh, 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 people always say, you don't let Shane talk, and you, you talk to him. No, nah, but again, I, I knew there was going to be questions because I hadn't been on in a while, so I'll just fill you guys in. So now we can, uh, you know, go on to other things. Looking at the TV. Uh, yeah, the phone's facing us, but yeah, we've got a big screen TV showing. I, I'm, all your I, I have the, the, the app hooked up to the TV so I can read your comments. I'm blind and... I have to put the phone back at a certain distance to be able to capture Shane and I both and the camera, so that's why. Most embarrassing date story. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I, would, I would have to think about that. Oh, how I sweet talk. Tana's good. She's, she's sitting out of frame. Yeah, she's sitting here on the couch. So, can't answer relationship questions. Sorry, can't answer anything. I, I, unfortunately, I'm on TV about a relationship. That involves my relationship, that involves Jennifer, that involves anything to do with anything that you have seen on the show. Sweet <laughs> So, Tim, I admire you and Veronica have a major relationship and love how your daughter, not your love, but you never know it. Yes, it, is, it has been nice that Veronica and I, although, you know, Veronica really gets on my nerves, to be honest with you, sometimes. <laughs> we still fight. Uh, we, we have a very weird relationship, like, um, you know, uh, we spent many, many years together. I love hate relationships. It's a love-hate relationship, yes. So, you know, she, she's, she's been a part of my life for so long, I don't know what my life would be like without her, but she definitely still can get on my nerves. Uh, wouldn't have gone on that swing either. Yes, no. I, 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 no regrets with the, <laughs> the swing decision. Shane does have a nice smile. Look. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, Veronica, like, Veronica will tell you, she hates me half of the week, too. But we do always pull it together for Chloe. You know, uh, sometimes I'm really irritated with Veronica, but, you know, Chloe comes first, and, you know, we're living separate lives. Like, there's so many rumors in the media about Veronica and I. So let me clear that up and address that now. Veronica and I are not back together. 
if you notice on Pillow Talk, we're sitting extremely far apart and we're not in a bedroom. You know, that was one of our stipulations was that it had to be filmed in a sofa because, you know, Veronica's got a boyfriend. I'm, you know, my thing is going on. So, uh, just because we were on TV together doesn't mean anything other than that. Or friends, they don't film Pillow Talk out of the country. So, you know, if you're not married and your wife doesn't live with you, then you can't really do it with your spouse or girlfriend or whatever. But Pillow Talk, again, is just a different format. So don't, don't let this show fool you. Uh, how is your Spanish after dating Latinas? I've been dating Latinas for 14 years, uh, on and off, now mostly on, and I still don't speak fluent Spanish, but I, I, I try to learn a few words a month, so eventually I'll know it. Uh, yes, Malice Alice, we missed you. Uh, I have talked to, uh, Austin, or the past, me and Shane still owe him a phone call. So, I told him that after the holidays we would get that done, but. I wonder where the suck is. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a surprise. It's kind of late, too. Yeah. Um, who is your favorite 90 day couple? Mm, I don't know. My best friend from the show is absolutely Darcy. Uh, Tom is a good friend of mine too. Um, but favorite couple, not, 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 I don't know. Uh, now the new couples, I like the Michael guy. I think it's cool. Uh, I can't remember the girl's name, but, uh, that story is kind of interesting to me. Uh, just because I can kind of relate it a little bit to one of my previous relationships, but, uh, did the auction date happen? No. We have not scheduled the new uh, auction yet. Again, we'll have to see at the, the holidays, after the holidays, and I'll know my schedule a little bit better. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you look really good for your age. My boyfriend and I watched the show and literally thought you were like 29 or 30. Well, thank you. Uh, I think we both look good. Shane is almost 50, believe it or not. Don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, he, he looks, uh, to, to me, he's more impressive than me because I never thought in a million years when I was 50 I would look like that. So, uh, <laughs> Michael believes in the aliens. He is the best. Yeah, he's definitely an eccentric guy. Uh, Who? My, he's on the new cast, 90, uh, 90 Day Fiance Season 7. Hi from Holland. Hello back. Hello from Cali. Hello. You look really good too, Shane. Dang, 50. Thank you. Ashley, what's up? <laughs> Haven't talked to you in a while either. Hope you're doing well. I was thinking about you the other day. I was going to text you, but I didn't. Uh, who called the show first, you or Jennifer? I don't understand that question. Uh, hi, Shane. I'm 50. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Shane's not 50 yeah, yet. Yeah, I say, don't tell him that. Shane's I'm not, not I'm 50 not, yet. Not he, he, he's 49. <laughs> No, 49 next month. Oh, uh, excuse me. He's 48 <laughs> and a third. <laughs> Don't bump him up. Now, I turn I turn 40 next year, so I am I'm, I feel the same way. Like, don't call me 40 yet. Wow, almost 50. What's your skincare secret, Shane? Lancome. <laughs> <laughs> Lancome. Uh, we got yeah. a jokester in here tonight. Uh, do you have any skin No, secret? not really. You know what his skin secrets are? He never smoked. He never did drugs. He never drank. That that's the best. Yeah, that's that's true. He's always been like good to his body, and he works out. Uh, he's been going to the gym probably for twenty years at least, right? Yeah. Because I remember when I was like eighteen, going to the gym with you. Yeah. So he he's worked out, and he's never. I mean, you know, cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, all the fun shit in life is the stuff that will age you the fastest. Uh, actually, that's that's the that's, main... probably, that's probably the biggest secret. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I, actually, that's why I quit smoking. I was smoking when we filmed before. I was a pack a day smoker, and you know when you're about to be on TV, you start really looking at your physical appearance. Oh. <laughs> like you're really like, mm, man, mm, you know. So I was like, oh, I look a little tired today, and I was like, mm, menthol cigarettes, that's terrible for your skin. So that, uh, in a vain way, that was my biggest motivation to quit. Like I was a little scared of cancer. But really, I was like, man, I don't want to start looking old. And I, I haven't smoked cigarettes now for like seven or eight months. I vape, which might be just as bad, but at least I was able to get rid of the cigarettes where I don't have that smell. But Shane's drug is life. Have you seen the stuff he gets into? <laughs> That's true, man. Shane, Shane hey, next life. month, Malice will be down in Florida near you. You hear that? St. Augustine. 
Well, there you go. <laughs> so if you would if you would like to meet up with Shane Malice, send him a PM. Thank you very much, uh, Ogre's Jar. I know I butcher y'all's Instagram favorite handles. Favorite movie of 2019. Uh, favorite movie of 2019. Actually, I, I'm not going to say this is my favorite, but the only good movie I've watched lately from 2019 was Dragged Across the Concrete. It was a sleeper. At Mel Gibson and Vince Vaughn. It's a dark drama. Uh, it was it was really good. Some people would probably say it's slow, but I love movies that are kind of that pace. Uh, so that was really good. I recommend it. Uh, whoever said that about vaping, uh, I always warn people in my videos, so I haven't done one in a while, but I'll say it. I don't like reading comments about me vaping, and if I see it normally, I will block you just because, again, I'm 39 years old, so please, I don't, I don't need a mother figure in the chat. <laughs> I don't tell you how to live your life. Please don't tell me how to live mine. And I think we can all be respectable. Uh, I use vaping again because I quit smoking, not because I think it's cool. It's not that I like the flavor. It's a nicotine uh, thing for me. So I will be, that will be the one warning. Have you seen Don't Fuck With Cats? No, I have not. I've not even heard of that. Heard of it, but I haven't seen it. I keep seeing people talk about it. Yeah, so uh, 2019 has been rough for movies, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, the Irishman was probably one of the biggest disappointments uh, in my life. Uh, a good movie, sure. Scorsese, De Niro, and Pacino, not what I was expecting. Uh, it was probably an hour and a half longer than it needed to be. And how many times has the story of Hoffa been told? I mean, you can tell it so many ways, but you really got to come up with something new and innovative to retell that story. Uh, was that, I think that's probably one of the worst uh, movies of 2019 that I've been waiting on. That's based on a book called I Heard You Paint Houses, and I've been following that thing for like two years. And it was for Netflix, you know what I mean? So I was excited like that it was coming to Netflix. But Netflix has yet to produce. I, I got to say, like I just canceled my Netflix. They have yet to produce a TV show or a movie that's great. They do some good stuff, but there's nothing that Netflix has put out that I was like, oh my God, that's great. So they, they need to step it up or Netflix is going to be gone. I think with Disney Plus and the new Apple and the new, you know, all these new streaming apps that are coming out, uh, Netflix, Hulu has got Handmaid's Tale. So, I mean, at least they've got that. I think that's a phenomenal show. HBO puts out the best shows. I mean, that's bar none. If you haven't checked out HBO app, all of the best shows of all time HBO made. They really put the money in. I, I read they spend like $2.8 billion a year or something on their... I mean, they literally produce shows of quality of movies. Uh, so I, I really suggest that people look at that as an alternative if you're getting tired of Netflix. I mean, there's so many good shows on HBO. So, uh, you like <laughs> farts. That's like, hey, nobody's giving me attention. What can I say that's outrageous that'll make everybody focus on me? There you go. I focused on it. Uh, Netflix has a Christmas Chris. Netflix weak movie game, yes. Because it's just Netflix, not HBO. Although HBO is like $16 a month. It's a, it's a more expensive app, but I mean, the quality, you get what you pay for. Hulu has 90 days on your show. Ah, yes. How can I forget? Because that's what I do in my spare time is watch 90 Day Fiance. I don't, I don't get enough of it from Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and Reddit and Google. It's my favorite thing to do. I'm just kidding. Um, no, that's cool if you watch 90 Day on Hulu. I've never watched 90 Day on... I, I usually watch it on YouTube, to be honest with you. Uh, so, uh, I've never actually sat and watched it, like, series by series. But, uh, you know, I've been keeping up with some of the new cast. But, you know, I, like I said, I've been really busy, man. Like, it's Christmas is, you know, a lot of retail stores. That's when, that's when people want to buy $3,000 gold-plated guns is at Christmas and tax time. During the summer, they're traveling going on vacation and you got back to school so nobody's spending any money so it just worked out thank god that the show was released during the deadest time of the year and i had time to do show related stuff uh but if it, they would have released it at christmas that would have been really difficult so uh did we yeah hold on hold on guys that the, the froze uh two things i don't talk about on uh, live is politics or religion sorry uh, i'm not trying to be an asshole but it just starts a lot of unneeded comments and attention because no matter what you say there will always be people that don't agree with you and then you know want to start rumors and all types of stuff so uh anyway so if you guys uh have anything else to say questions for shane uh, what's your favorite band Tim? Mm, this is definitely not molly crew probably megadeth of all time megadeth is probably my favorite band either that or pantera 
Uh, old Metallica, I mean, the first four Metallica albums, like, I could never get tired of listening to those. But Megadeth, Rust in Peace, is probably one of my favorite albums of all time. Iron Maiden. Uh... <laughs> hey, Lonnie. Yeah, a lot of familiar faces yeah. here tonight. A lot of people showing up. Thank you, 90 Day Petty. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, I do like Coldplay. There, there's a couple of their songs I like. I'm not a huge Coldplay. Favorite wrestler, Kevin Nash. I think Shane's is The Undertaker. Yeah, I always like The Undertaker. Yeah. Scott Steiner. Yeah, I remember when The Undertaker Both fought <laughs> Kevin Nash uh, when he was Diesel. That was like a big thing, competitive thing for us. Like, And Kevin Nash lost, but it was because he was going to WCW to start the NWO, but... I'm a big, we're, we're from the same city as Ric Flair. I mean, we run yeah. into him at restaurants and stuff. Like, Ric Flair is very prominent in this area. So, I got to say Ric Flair just because he put Charlotte on the map. I mean, he's probably the most famous guy that was ever born in Charlotte, North Carolina. He survived a plane crash, broke his neck at like 17, and became probably one of the biggest wrestlers of all time beside of Hulk Hogan. So, you gotta have respect for him. And he's, he's like 65, 70 years old, still partying. You know, he, he's partied his whole life and it isn't slowing down. So, yeah, I, woo. I, I have a lot of respect. You can't go to a concert in Charlotte or a live event without hearing people scream, woo, even if it's not wrestling. Uh, I mean, it's, it's very big here. So, I don't watch wrestling anymore, no. I, I usually watch WrestleMania. That's like the one event that I'll sit down every year and watch, but I, I don't like new wrestling, to be honest with you. That was more of a late 90s, early 2000 phase I went through. But I had, we met Kevin Nash, we met Buff Bagwell. Who else yeah. did we meet? Yeah. I met Jake the Snake, Roberts, I met... I met Roddy Piper. Yeah, he met Roddy Piper right before he died. Uh, I met China right before she died. Uh, who, I'm trying to think, there's another Jordan one I Alex met. Perez. Did you mention them? When you met, mm, you met them? Yeah, that was I was so little when I met them. I really don't remember. But I, I've met a lot of. Russia. I've always wanted to meet Scott Steiner. He's like mm. on my list. I heard he's a dick, but everybody says you know things. But uh, yeah, we, you know we were into the old school wrestling. I, I follow a lot of those guys on Sting. Instagram. Yeah, we like Sting. Sting, yeah. Now, it's funny because he met Roddy Piper. At the same event that I met China, it was just like mm -hmm. a year or two apart. And we used to say it was a curse of wrestlers coming to Charlotte to conventions because literally both of those wrestlers died the next month after they did the Charlotte convention. So, sorry. Um, now, I've never met The Rock. Actually, I, Hulk Hogan was at an event I was at one year. I was in the same room with him, but I didn't feel like standing in the line to meet him. So, I, like, saw him. He's big in person. And Jimmy Hart, you know, was there with him. But I never got to meet Scott Hall. He was one of my favorites. Uh, if you've never seen Beyond the Mat, it's a documentary about Mankind, Jake the Snake, Terry Funk. That is a phenomenal documentary. Also, the movie of Mickey Rourke, The Wrestler, is really, really good. Uh, even if you don't like wrestling, I think you can still appreciate those two films. They're They're really good, so... Um, got a lot of questions if you're single, a lot of questions, gazing into your, what color are your eyes, blue or green? Green. Gazing into your green eye, he's so good looking. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, robot, I came here from Chris and my wife and she legit cried. Oh man, that's cool. Tell him I appreciate buying the cameo. I try to put a lot of effort into those cameos. Like, they're normally five to eight minutes. A lot of people only do, like, 30 to 60 seconds. But I try to make sure people get their money's worth. Yeah, Shane would be good on Pillow Talk. See what happens in the future. I'm from South Africa. I'm getting over a cold, so that's why I keep, like, choking on my own congestion. <sighs> but uh, his face makes me want to smack him. I don't know who you're talking yeah, about, but I hope you don't want to smack one of us. Uh, let's see what else we got. What's going on with these comments? What's your plans for New Year's Eve? I don't have any plans for New Year's Eve, actually. Uh, which, you know, I used to go do the, the the midnight thing, and now large groups of people like that give me anxiety, so... A lot of drunks in Charlotte. Yeah, there's a lot. A lot of, well, there's a lot of drunks everywhere, <laughs> especially on New Year's. Yeah, being around, like, you know, drunk rednecks all night, you know, is not my favorite pastime. 
So I'll probably avoid that. I think I went last year. I went last year downtown, and I sat in a parking deck trying to leave in my Ferrari for two hours. Like I, I feel like I burned a half a tank of gas just sitting, waiting to leave that thing. And I was like, never again. Like I was like, I'm never doing this again. And that was last New Year. So yeah, this year I won't be doing that. Uh, how do I do with my anxiety? That, I, I'll, I'll talk about that for a second. Uh, I was diagnosed with anxiety back in. 2009, 2010, first time in my life, they, I was on a daily medication for it called uh, Buspirone. Uh, I took it for two or three months. It got better to where I didn't have to take a daily for it. But I noticed that I was having a lot of anxiety at work. Back then, I had a real job. I wasn't self-employed full-time. And I would always get it in the car. Like I was always feeling like I was late you know, to go pick up Chloe from school. or you know, I was always in a hurry. Like My life was very fast-paced, and that's when I would get anxiety. Uh, now, you know, my doctor prescribes me an anxiety medication just to take if I feel like, you know, like a panic attack or something coming, which is very, very rare. But one of the best things for anxiety is to realize that it's anxiety. Uh, I had a lot of hypochondriac induced anxiety too. Like I always feel like my heart's beating too fast or, oh my God, my elbow hurts. And I would Google it and it would tell me that I'm dying of elbow cancer. Uh, so, you know, it's just a lot, a lot of that, you know, just learning that your mind is fucking with you. And once you really accept that. A lot of it goes away. Uh, one trick that I will tell you that works very well, if I feel like anxiety coming on and I go to a sink and just like splash super ice cold water on my face, normally it's like the cold shocks your body and it distracts you from feeling like, you know, you're, you're about to lose it. Because I can always feel it when I'm about to have a panic attack, which again, I haven't had one in years, but I know it's about to happen when it happens. So, you know, you got to just figure out some way to distract yourself, but... Uh, a lot of people deal with anxiety and people are afraid to talk about it. There, you know, there's nothing, don't, don't feel bad. I mean, I'm in an anxiety support group on Facebook that I joined years ago when I was having problems with it and it helped me a lot too. And there's a whole lot of people that are not drug addicts, not, you know, scum of the earth, like business professionals that are dealing with anxiety and, you know, everybody's there to help each other out. And if you're about to take the plunge off the deep end one night. There's people that will answer the phone and talk you down. And uh, it was good for me just to see that I wasn't alone with it. Um, but, you know, I really haven't had problems with it in several years. Uh, I haven't had a panic attack. I can't remember the last panic attack. I had knock on fucking wood because that is horrible. If you ever had a real panic attack, you know it is horrible. You really feel like you're dying. I mean, it's the scariest thing you can ever go through. So uh, I had one at work one day. And literally, I mean, my heart was beating so fast during that that I don't see how it didn't just explode out of my chest. But uh, it was it was horrible, and I, I didn't have any medicine or anything back then for it, so there was, I didn't even know what it was. Like I went to the doctor thinking that something was really wrong with me, and they were like, "You're having anxiety," and I I had never even considered that. You know, it was funny how anxiety will really physically trick your body into feeling like you're having physical symptoms that really aren't there. I mean, it's it's a crazy disease. But a lot of people, you know, deal with it. Stress is high in America, and uh, I think, like, you'll meet more Americans that are dealing with depression or anxiety than you will ever meet in other countries. Like, it's almost like that stuff doesn't even exist. But uh, I think just the way our society is, the pace of our lifestyle stresses people out. Everybody is always behind. You know, very few people are ahead in their life. Like, we're always living beyond our means and spending too much money, and we're always in debt. And I think that that lifestyle that Americans are accustomed to is just kind of fucked with a lot of our minds of trying to keep up. You know, that's that's my take on it, though. You know, but I'm not an expert. But if you're having anxiety, get it looked at. Uh, it, it, it can be scary, and if you're not careful, it can, you know, it can do some damage. Bet you're a gay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Hey, Queen, you about to be out of here? Yeah. Bye, bye. Like, come on. I can't stand when people start making homophobic jokes. Like, if any of you are, are um, homosexual in the group, I don't want you to be offended. So, anybody that makes homophobic jokes, I always block. Still got the Ferrari? Yes, I do. Believe it or not, still in the shop. Still in the shop. We're going on uh, nine months now. <laughs> <laughs> I've not had that car for nine months. So, that's a whole other story. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, read my shit, bro, it's life. What is it, Nicole? Give yourself a plug and tell us what shit we should read. So, any other questions or, uh, depression too, guys. Uh, if any of you are dealing with depression, 
My heart got broken today, actually. I, I, I'm a big video gamer. A lot of people don't know that. I play a lot of Call of Duty Zombies, and I'm on teams, and I'm a super nerd about it. One of the biggest YouTubers that has been doing videos, I mean, he had like 2 million subscribers. I mean, he was a very popular YouTuber, posted a video a couple weeks ago saying that he was like literally giving up his channel because he's so depressed he was moving to the mountains to like find himself. And, you know, this is a guy, I mean, he's got to be making forty or $50,000 a month off his YouTube. He's making, young guy making tons of money. And said he was so depressed that, like, he didn't want to do it for a while. And, I mean, like, you never thought this guy would be dealing with that. He's always super happy and energetic in his videos. Like, that disease is really scary, man. And uh, I think I think that, you know, uh, the government ought to really offer some more assistance for people having mental health disorders and people that can't afford mental health care. It's, it's getting serious in this country. So, uh, actually, you know, I, I've done a lot with bullied children throughout this show, and I was thinking that the next auction or something me and Shane come up with will probably go towards some sort of help for mental care. Uh, that's another issue that I really wanted to try to help out while I had my 15 minutes of spotlight. So, kind of did 2019 for bullied children, 2020, whatever time I have, I think we'll find some mental health uh, facility to work with. So, Shane. Yep, Shane's my name. Yeah, but he don't spell it like that. <laughs> uh, Nicole Taylor. Uh oh, do we have somebody yeah. misbehaving in the chat? Uh, my teacher keeps hounding me. It's scary. Help. He called my work today. What am I supposed to do about that? <laughs> like, what? Call the police. Harassed. If somebody's harassing you, call the police. My, hey, <laughs> kids kick me off and I'm trying to play games with them because I'm horrible at them. Oh, yeah. I mean, video games are like anything else. Video, believe it or not, Americans have gotten so lazy. Video gaming is a real sport now. <laughs> like, they have actually turned video games into a sport. You can win millions of dollars if you are good at a game. And uh, I'm not athletic, if you guys didn't catch that from the TV show. Like, I'm not, you know, into football or basketball or baseball, any, any kind of sport, really. But I, I, I love video. I'm a nerd at heart, man. Like, I, I like all the nerdy stuff. So not like World of Warcraft level nerdiness. Like, I don't go that far. But, you know, like shooters. Yeah, like I love gun games and stuff like that. Uh, I don't do Steam I don't know what that is. Like, I don't do TikTok. I don't do Snapchat. I don't do. In, 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 Who's Nicole? I don't know, but in, Instagram is as far as I go. Like, I, I I barely even use Twitter. Like, I I just I don't have time for all these different social media apps. Instagram is the one that I focus on the most. Uh, I have the most followers on Instagram. I interact with people more on Instagram. I mean, Facebook. Like, Facebook is becoming my space, in my opinion. It's going to be obsolete probably in five years. So I keep that. Like, all my old aunts and my parents and, like, people that, like, are in our family that we never talk to, they're all on Facebook. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we keep Facebook for them. But for all of our friends and stuff, we use Instagram. Uh, I don't know anything about Nicole and his aunt. Never met either one of them or talked to either one of them. Uh, just a regular nobody. Answer my question, all capital. So sorry, Rosario, I didn't see your question. Guys, remember, the chat is moving very fast. Uh, we are not uh, able to respond to every statement, but please do not get upset and start screaming in all caps. <laughs> please. We're doing the best that we can. My throat is actually kind of still hurting, and every time I'm talking, it's hurting, so please be patient. Um, show some cool guns. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now. Um, I post some videos on the guns, but I've said before, eh, you know, I try to be respectful for the non-gun people on this just because this is my verified, like, public figure account. You know, on my gun business, gun Instagram, I post a lot more because the people that are there are there for guns. The people that are following me mostly are there from the TV show. Uh, and I, I don't want to offend people. Also, every time I was posting gun stuff, people were, like, reporting it. Like, uh, I guess, like, really anti-gun people were trying to get my account uh, blocked and deleted just for posting a picture of a gun, even though I'm a licensed federal gun dealer. But, so I, I have to be careful. You know, when you're on TV, people, you, you don't realize all the shit we deal with that I don't ever talk about and the other castmates don't talk about. 
Like, people are always fucking reporting you to every social media for everything. Like, they're offended by everything you do. Like, it's, it's like, um, amazing that any cast member from 90 Day Fiance has a social media account, you know, because we get reported for everything we post. So, you know, you have to be very careful what you do when you're in the public eye because, like, you guys can post something that if I posted, it would be a big deal. And I hate that. Because I'm a normal person just like, y'all, I was just on TV for 15 minutes. You know, but because of that, people like, I don't know, they criticize everything I do much more. And nobody prepares you for that. You're just kind of like thrown into it one day. You know, you're not an actor. Like, you don't have a Hollywood agent like guiding you every step of the way. So, you know, we learn as we go. But, ah, just like, what's going on? Hello. <laughs> So I'm assuming, I'm, I'm wondering if most of you guys are on the West Coast, because it was like 1 o'clock in the morning here on the East Coast. Um, uh, it is uh, at Gringo Guns. It's the Instagram page for my gun business, at Gringo Woo-hoo! Guns. And I post uh, nothing for sale, because Instagram doesn't allow gun sales, but I post pictures of my work. And, uh, you know, you can get some ideas for things that you want to do, so... Thank you very much. That's the biggest compliment. I always get sushi. People say it to me all the time. I am authentic. I try to keep it real and uh, be as down to earth as possible because, I mean, who the fuck am I? I'm just like y'all. So, uh, yeah. We try to keep everything legit and honest. So, have you been to Canada? Still have not. Have you ever been to Canada? No. No. Nah. Mom's the one that likes Canada. Yeah, uh, I've said this before. Shane and I have to spread my mother's ashes whenever she dies in Canada. So if I don't go before my mom dies, I'll be there then. But that is the place that she has picked to have her ashes blown in the dust and wind. In Nova Scotia. In Nova Scotia, that's right. So uh, she loves it. She's been several times. She, she says it's very beautiful. And I, I've said this, and I had no offense to Americans or any other culture, but Canadians are the nicest motherfuckers you ever meet in your life. Like, during the entire TV history of me, Canada people have been the nicest. They have consistently been the nicest. I've not had to block hardly any Canadians. Uh, they never send me hate mail. Anything they message me is always super nice. Like, literally, to be honest, I had no interest in ever going to Canada uh, after doing that show and seeing how nice the Canadians were, now it's in one of my top three places to go. Come to Syria. <laughs> Syria. Uh, I would like to visit Syria, but I don't know. I mean, I, yeah, I'd like to see it, but I'd, I'd have to be be safe. Uh, looking at a TV screen. Is that the one that people keep complaining yeah. about? She's getting on my nerves. That's the dumbass question. Yeah. Nicole, like, you're annoying. I'm sorry. It probably makes it makes their night. That's why I try to not like spotlight people that are being a jackass because that's what they want. They just want me to mention their name and and then they run off to all the ninety day uh, Instagram pages and yeah, I was just in his live and you know I, he oh he can't take a joke. I just said like one thing and he he banned me. God, he doesn't have a sense of humor. I mean, he's on TV. What does he expect? I mean, you know, he's in the public eye. We should be able to say whatever we want. Like they, they, I read all that shit all the time. They think they're so fucking cool. That they, they, you know, insulted me and that, you know, I'm just so uptight that I can't take a joke. But, like, it's annoying, you know, when you're trying to talk to people that are genuinely interested in what you have to say. And then there's just that one jackass that's always got to, like, oh, you know, you're gay. Oh, you know, uh, you, you fart. Oh, you know, just saying, like, the most off-the-wall things trying to get attention. So, uh, are you shy? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I'm on an international TV show. That's, you know... You're, you're followed around for three weeks with, you know, 25 people you don't know in every intimate, you know, aspect of your life. I don't think that most shy people would do that, but, you know, everybody has their opinion. That's the cons of being on TV. People are cop chasers, only attention hunters. Yeah, for sure. And some people that do TV are the same. You know, they're only on TV so they can try to get attention. Uh, cannot answer if I'm still with Jennifer. Are you coming back on the show? Can't answer that. What's a typical day like for you? Good question. I usually up to about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. I usually get up around 11. Uh, And then I start, usually for the first two hours, checking emails, responding to emails and that kind of shit. Then I start working on guns, usually till about 5 or 6, depending. And then at night is usually when I do, like, the logistical side of the business, like, list things for sale online, you know, package things up, print shipping labels, like, you know, that kind of thing. It's kind of boring, to be honest. 
So, yeah, and then usually I take Saturday and Sunday off, although from like December to March, maybe April, I'm usually doing something seven days a week. So, so are you coming back on 90 Day Fiance? I'll watch. Uh, I'm on Pillow Talk right now. Uh, the, the future of the other shows, I don't know, and if I did know, I couldn't say it, so. Have you met anyone else from the TLC shows? Actually, uh, yeah, I've met some people, but the latest person I talked to, there's a new show that's about, I don't know how to say this, because I can't remember the name of the show, but it's like someone who's overweight married to someone who's pretty attractive. And, you know, I think in this show, it's all overweight females that are married to, somebody help me out, I know somebody has seen this. Show It's new. TLC just started showing it like uh, two or three weeks ago. But one of the guys on that show uh, reached out to me that right before the show premiered and was asking me like what to expect once the show hit. Like, you know, I think I, even I did that. When I knew I was cast on the show, I reached out to a couple of former 90 Day cast people and was like, yo, like what, what, what do I need to be prepared for? When you're stepping onto a very popular channel, you, you know, it, it changes your life overnight. And, and like I said, nobody really preps you for what, for what's going to happen. So I was very curious, like, you know, what do I need to look out for? What do I need to be careful about? And, and that guy, oh, hot and heavy, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be honest with you, I can't remember his name. Uh, I want to say he's from Florida. So I don't know if you guys know, like, where the couples are from. But he's a super nice guy, uh, really nice guy. I had, like, a 30-minute conversation with him on the phone. But uh, no, I will not look at the camera. We've already addressed that seven times. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh -huh. hot, hot and heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, actually, I, I've seen some snippets of it, but... Yeah, Rusty, that's his name. There you go. Katie Not Holmes, good to see you. Haven't talked to you in a while. Um, remember when Angela almost fought you? Angela didn't almost fight me. We argued, but it never was, like, physical or anything like that. So... Uh, I don't know what he looks like, to be honest with you, because we just spoke on the phone. So, but super nice guy. Uh, check the show out. You know, I, 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 it's a new show, so if it does well, they'll probably renew it for more episodes. But he's a really nice guy, yeah. But other than that, I mean, yeah, like, I, I know half half of the 90-day roster from my show and others, you know, I've, I've met or I've talked to at least once, uh, you know. So I, I get that. Now, some of them, like, I've never met Dean, never talked to Dean, for example. Never met or talked to Tariq, although Tariq hasn't said anything bad about me, so I don't want to badmouth him. But Dean is, you know, the only one, actually the only person in 90 Day History that has just, you know, had such wonderful things to say about me all the time. Uh... You know, the only other person that I ever had any... I, I read the other day, like, oh, Tim's such a crybaby. He always has drama. He, I, I've never had drama with anybody from the show except for a little bit with Jesse. Which, guys, it was on TV. Remember that. So, you know, it's a little bit different than what's going on with me and Dean. But, yeah, you know, to be honest, I, I was, like, questioning whether or not I would dress the Dean shit tonight. Uh... <coughs> I learned a long time ago, before you make a decision in your life that's going to affect something like quitting a job, breaking up with your girlfriend, you know, anything big, to sleep on it. Sleep on it. And then figure out how you feel after you've slept. And half the time, your direction will change when you're not pissed. And, you know, that shit with Dean's been going on for like a couple months. And it's funny because when he made his response video, he was like, oh, I haven't talked about you. I started collecting all the different in, in, interviews and stuff he's done, you know, to, to, to prove that he's wrong, that he's wrong about everything he said. But uh, it was the holidays, and I was like, you know, I, I don't want to keep this feud going for the holidays. But, you know, hopefully he learned his lesson, and I don't have to embarrass him further. So I'm going to say, Dean, because trust me, the next video is going gonna, is gonna to shut, shut you down, buddy. You're not going to be able to come back from that. So, hopefully, uh, we will be finished with that. Uh, kitchen nightmares ruined my friend's business. They had the whole episode to look horrible and dramatic. Everybody says that. You know, I, I never complained about the editing. 
you know, again, guys, I mean, they, if they film most people's lives with no editing, you guys wouldn't watch it. It would be too fucking boring. I mean, you can take a drama queen, and if you filmed her just 24 hours a day, most of it would be unwatchable. So they have to do some editing. I mean, it's, it's needed. So I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, my favorite episode when you were asked to cut the balls off the bull. Oh, I've forgotten about that. I need to go back. I, maybe next year, like the summer when it's been like a year, I'll go back and watch it again because it was like this whole experience was such a blur. I don't really remember that much of it, but um, all right, everybody, MC Duffy Cat is out. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yes. Thank you, Malice Alice. Tim is a giant cuck. What is mm. cuck? Is that is that a cock typo? Tell us how you really feel. Northrop Strip. Northrop Strip. Um, uh, are you still dating Jennifer? Malice Alice, would you please be my official answering the are you still with Jennifer questions? I would appreciate that. So, pretty much, if you still see Tim on TLC, he can't take too much. Thank you. Hey, why didn't you sleep with Jennifer? She's so hot. Hi. Mind you, about it? Yes. Yeah. That's fine. I do pillow talk every week for every show that I watch. I mean, that's what I do. I talk, watch it with people and make fun or talk shit. So it's it's fun for me. Is there a favorite couple? No, not really. I think somebody asked that before. But, uh, who's y'all's favorite couple from the new season? Uh, I'd be curious to hear that. Do you like sushi? <laughs> No, I, I really, I don't like fish, period. I don't eat fish, and especially not uncooked fish. Jennifer pegged Tim. Oh, we got we got a jokester in here. We got a jokester in here. Who is this? Let me see. Is this a man or a woman? Looks like a dude. Oh, Norstrip. Norstrip. Are you jealous because you want Jennifer, so you need to badmouth me? There's so many guys that I see. That go online that are just so in love with Jennifer and, and, and can do nothing but make fun of me and talk about how much better of a man they are than me and how much better looking they are than me is is really amusing to me, the desperation of some men. Thank you very much, uh, Cheryl Spencer. Thank you, Era Girl 94 Can't wait to watch the new season. It's boring. I love the cast from the old seasons. Yeah, I mean, again, every season changes. You know what I mean? Like... Of course, you're going to have your favorite season. Every TV show, you're going to have your favorite season. But I think they've got some interesting people on the new one. Uh, pegged, I believe, is slang for fucked. Like, pegged in the ass. I think it's the expression. Probably. So, I don't know. I have to look it up on me. Or I had to look up the other day what beard meant. Uh, there was some... Mean. Beard in the Urban Dictionary is when a heterosexual man has a hot woman around him to appear not gay. That the woman is called the beard. <laughs> so you know, some people were. Yeah, I, I learned so many new uh, derogatory words <laughs> from my Instagram of people saying negative things to me, but it's good because then I can keep up. You know, my daughter just turned thirteen, and you know these kids have like all these new words and stuff, and I don't want to seem uncool. Then I don't know them, so... Uh, do you go to Speed Street at some May, correct? Uh, I have been to Speed Street. I yeah. think you've been before, too. Yeah, we've gone to Speed yep. Street before. I probably won't go this year, though. Um, it's kind of gone downhill. Somebody else teach me another slang word. Let, let's go Let's go over some... That, that would be interesting. Urban slang words like beard. Because Shane didn't know that either. Like, we're old. So... Uh, I don't want to say too much about other couples, but I will say this. Uh, I've never personally met Michael, but that was the hardest thing I watched in the whole filming of Pillow Talk was that Michael got denied his visa. I think Michael deserves it. I think Michael is a genuinely good guy that's, that's not trying to just get a visa out of Angela. And it, it really broke my heart, to be honest with you, seeing him get denied. Uh, I felt like our job on Pillow Talk is kind of like, you know, and talk about what's going on and make fun of people and like I, I just couldn't I was like man I feel really bad for the guy he seems like a nice guy I mean obviously he was on the computer the, the television on the tell all but I didn't get to interact with him at all so I mean he, he seems like a nice guy you know what I mean and I think he really wants to come to this country for the right reasons so I hope they get it figured out no, I, I wish Michael the best 
How the fuck are you still online? I don't know what that means. Danny Martinez. Let me see your tots. <laughs> tots. Like my tits? Uh, what is my favorite TV show? What's your name? Live um, PD. Yeah, I watch a lot of Live PD or Blacklist. Live PD, is that the show that's like cops? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, my favorite show right now is uh, Yellowstone and Handmaid's Tale, probably. Power, I'm waiting on these last five episodes of Power. Power is one of my favorites, but Game of Thrones was my favorite that it ended. I love Scandal, then that ended. How to Get, How to get Away with Murder is really good. Um, but the ones that are current, Yellowstone, if you haven't seen that, it's phenomenal. Uh, Handmaid's Tale, phenomenal. Um, I've heard The Mandalorian, if you're a Star Wars fan, is really good. I'm not a huge Star Wars fan anymore, but I was when I was a kid, but I, I'm at some point going to watch it just because oh, everybody nice. said it's the, the best Star Wars adaptation in like the last 10 years, so. Uh, look up Elf on the Shelf, the Urban Dictionary. Well, south of the boulevard, just tell us. What Elf on the Shelf means in the Urban Dictionary. Shout out to Katie and Shelby. Katie. 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 God almighty. Katie and Shelby. Shout out. What do you think of Senjin? I don't know. I don't know the motherfucker. I don't have an opinion. Uh, Star Wars has been asked. Yes, watch The Mandalorian. It's good. Yeah, yeah, I will. Chloe got the, uh, the Disney Plus for Christmas and... She gave me an account. I haven't even downloaded it yet, but um, I'll check it out. Tim, you're too small to be the elf on the shelf. Okay, well, I'm still dying to know what it means. So if somebody knows, uh, which house are you in Game of Thrones? Uh, that's uh, probably Lannister. I don't know. Peter Dinklage was phenomenal on that show. The Hound was my favorite. He didn't really have a house, but that was my favorite character. And I like, like towards the end, I like Jamie Lannister and... Uh, I, you know, uh, Joffrey, yeah, he was an asshole, but that, that kid that played him was amazing. I mean, Joffrey should go down as one of the greatest villains of all time. You know, and actually the kid that played Joffrey retired after Game of Thrones. He was young. I mean, he was only like uh, 17 or 18, maybe 20, but he, I guess, made enough money all of that. And he was like, I don't want to act anymore. So he's not acting, but he was great. I mean, Joffrey's one of the most evil villains probably of any movie or TV show. How do I deal with people being so rude? Don't take it seriously. Like, literally, it doesn't affect me at all. Uh, I, I block, on average, probably 10 people. Now, when the show was on, probably 40 to 50 people a day. Just on Instagram now, probably maybe, I don't know, 5, 10 on some days. Like, if an episode premiered the night before. But I just block it and move on my life. you got to have the right mentality to be on TV. I mean, you can be Mother Teresa. People are still going to find something wrong or something they don't like. The way you look, the way you talk, you know, something you said, something you post. I mean, it doesn't matter. Your boy in the back is sexy as fuck. That's not my boy. That's my brother. <laughs> uh, For the Pokemon. Yeah. I'm glad that y'all are so impressed by my bro, sexy brother. <laughs> the very first couple of videos we did, people would have thought he was my gay lover. So it's, it's good that now we've moved past that and, and people can identify. I mean, everybody says that we look alike. So it's funny to me that, like, he gets people that walk into his work all the time. Before the TV show or anything, that would just immediately ask him if he was my brother because we worked in the same company just at different buildings mm -hmm. uh, for many years. So, you know, we often get asked if we're brothers, but then, of course, leave it to Instagram to incite that we were... Uh, in a relationship, a, a romantic relationship together. So, yes, he is an angel. No, I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. Do we have a Sanchez being rude in here? So, what else we got? Vasquez. If you guys are bored, we'll go. I don't even know how long we've been doing this. It's probably getting close to that. Yeah, it's getting close to the kickoff getting time. Getting close to the kickoff time. Y'all ask Shane a couple of questions since y'all always say I don't let him talk. Janelle's ex-husband. Janelle from that MTV show, the 16 and Pregnant, that Janelle? Do you like Colt? No, I love Colt. Colt is 90, 95% of my business. I'm a big Colt enthusiast. I used to collect Colts. Now they're talking about Colt the dude. 
talking about the dude with Philip. Oh, pfft. <laughs> I, I don't know him. I talked to his mom one time. I've never actually talked to him. Uh, no, I was never on Teen Mom. <laughs> no. Uh, I think somebody asked you, Shane, if you uh, dated, you like Latin girls. Nah. <laughs> nah. I, I think I'm the one that inherited. He, he's got to be careful because his fiance is, you know, sitting in the room, so. Uh, Shane, question, what's your favorite dessert? Hmm. Fish pie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Game of Thrones joke before you guys get the wrong idea. You you guys remember on season two, I think. You still have the Lamborghini. <laughs> Never had a Lambo. Still got the Ferrari. Ferrari's in the shop. No Seahawks. No. I don't, I don't even know what that is. The football team. Nah, I don't keep up with sports at all. Who won the fight tonight? Did anybody watch the big fight that everybody was talking about on Showtime? Uh, I don't even know who was fighting, but I heard a lot of people saying, "Yeah, Shane on the next <laughs> ninety days." I don't, nah. I don't believe you'll be seeing Shane on any ninety days show. He's he's engaged. Congratulate Shane. Shane just got engaged. I'm I'm happy for him. So he will be the first successful Clemson. Malcolm mm-hmm. to ever. Uh, well. Between the three brothers, he'll be the first one to actually get married. It was there an MMA yeah. fight tonight? Oh, uh, it was boxing. I think it was boxing. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I don't know. It was a Fedora fight. won. Thank you, Sanchez. You watch WWE? No, I do not. Not anymore. Congrats, Shane. Would you do another show? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't... Yeah, I would. I mean, I'm not, like, pursuing anything. Like, I, I live in North Carolina. I'm not in New York or L.A. If you want to keep being on TV, you really need to live in one of those cities. There's not a whole lot of opportunities in North Carolina. And besides reality TV, the reality TV is the only people that are going to come to you to film your life. If not, you, you got to go to a studio or go to a set. So the traveling is exhausting, um, you know, and, and I'm not going to move to LA or New York. I mean, it's just not going to happen. So probably not. Uh, do we get to meet the fiance? Yeah, one day. One day. One day you will. I'm the sure. Videos I'll, are all online. Uh, I, I'm sure that I will film at some at their wedding. Uh, I'll definitely will put some of that on Instagram. So uh, the weather in North Carolina right now is kind of hot. Yeah, it's weird. This is uh, North Carolina has the most bipolar weather. Uh, like literally, you will have your AC on in the daytime and your heater on at night. Like it's hot during the day and freezing at night. Like that's probably why I'm sick. We've been having very Super cold days and hot and freezing and hot. Like, it's, it's horrible for your body. Um, does Darcy put out or not? I, I, I don't know. Darcy's just my friend. Uh, Slayer, hell yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, cool. Now Instagram tells me how much I have remains. We have two minutes remaining. Uh, do you still use Swing Worker Gold face products? Yes, I do. In fact, I'm glad you said that because I'm about to do another promotion with Beauty Kitchen starting at the first of the year. So we've got a new product that they want me to talk about, and actually I've been using it, and it's good. Uh, besides the iPads. People still text me pictures of them watching 90 Day wearing those iPads. I, I, that's my legacy. and like People are going to remember me as the guy that wore those fucking iPads. I don't know if that's good or bad, but I mean, that's literally the, the, the most memorable thing I did on that entire show was wear those iPads, so. I know that your bro was on Teen Mom. My, n- n- neither one of us were on Teen Mom, I can assure you. <laughs> like, don't know what you're talking about. Darcy is fabulous. Have you ever Darcy is a sweetheart. For sure. Uh, Toronto was lit, and I actually it's cold up here. Guys, we have one minute remaining. Uh, can I get a shout out? Sock Pro. There's your shout out. Six fine teams someplace else. Oh, I love those iPads. They were just uh, yeah, they work really good. I mean, they really do. If you, you consistently use them, you get good results. Uh, why am I sweating? I'm sick. I got a cold. Uh, I've been sick. I like Christmas. I was really sick. I, I lost my voice for two days actually. So, dude, can you DM me? I don't DM yeah. a lot. Uh, in case cuts out, I love you guys. Thank you, Mouse Alice. Thank you for joining us. Veronica, I believe, left. All right, guys, we got 20 seconds left. Hope you've enjoyed this surprise video with Shane and I. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Well, there, Veronica is. Sorry, Veronica. You were so quiet, I thought you had left. Michael. Hello, Michael. 
Michael's like kind of in a weird way my brother in law, I guess. He's a good guy. Uh, guys, alright, one second. Bye bye.